Let's configure Linux Mint. In this video, let's go over background changes, adding applets, using extensions, uh, adding widgets to your thing, changing the resolution, all the system settings, pretty much anything in the system that we want to change in Linux Mint, we're going to get into in this video. So uh, check below for timestamps. I segregate everything out. So if you're looking for one specific thing, by all means, check that, click on it. It'll take you right to that spot in the video. And with all that said, let's not waste any time and jump right into it. I do live stream every Monday and Friday, so if you have a question for me, be sure and stop into my Twitch channel and ask me live. And if you'd like to check out these streams after the fact, you can always head over to Chris Titus Tech Streams and check out my entire archive over there. All right, so we're on the desktop here. A uh, couple things to note is I did change the background already and added some uh, widgets, uh, but we'll go into actually how I go about doing that. Um, and we're gonna clean this up, make it look even prettier because this right here, I don't like the aesthetic out of the gate. And honestly, the, the default settings, I think kind of look ugly. So let's get into the system settings. We'll just go down to the menu and then just go into the little settings or system settings icon. So from here, the very first thing I'm going to do is change the theme. I don't like a lot of white. Uh, it hurts my eyes, and uh, I think it's just kind of ugly looking. So let's change this out. We'll start with the desktop, and we'll just click on this right here where it says cinnamon. And you'll see, hey, there's the stock Linux Mint settings, which is that, which is fine. Um, but I like this sea blue. It gives like a transparent effect, and it kind of makes everything look a little bit prettier in my eyes. Uh, please note when you're in here, you can actually download and add things. There's, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. So if you are here and you want to add and remove, you can just go to add and remove and download directly from the net. You don't even need to leave and add stuff like you would Windows. You can actually see what everyone else is downloading. So this one right here is what uh, a lot of people are downloading. It says, hey, by popularity, this one is probably the best. So let's go ahead and download that. We'll just click on the arrow. It installs Adapta Nokoto. And we'll go to themes and let's select that one. See how that looks. As you see, it's at the start. And there we go. That's a, a theme that is already done and it's very popular. I was like, hey, you can't go wrong with it. Same with like mouse pointers. We can change this out. Since we're going to be going to a dark theme, let's go to a white mouse pointer. Uh, controls, let's change this around as well. Uh, we'll go with the, the theme, the Adopta No Kodo. And... Uh, here we go, icons. Again, let's let's figure out something nice. I kind of like the aqua folders. Let's switch that out. And then for this, we'll switch that out. So now we've got a nice theme going on, a little bit uh, cleaner and just feels sleeker. And the icon themes are just a bit better in my opinion. So let's go ahead and go back and change some other stuff. So we have effects here. I like to remove all window effects. I don't like wobbly windows. I don't like animations. It just kind of feels like it slows down the system or it just gives it kind of a clunky feel in my opinion. But to each his own, if you like those effects, by all means, come into the effects here, customize, enable the effects, whatever you want to do. I turn off all the effects in my system. Backgrounds, this is where I actually switch out. I really love this stock green Linux Mint background, which you can see back here, uh, just because it's it's just a really nice uh, background. Most stock backgrounds from Linux distributions kind of stink, uh, but in, in Linux Mint, I think they did such a great job. Uh, and there's actually other ones you can actually flip through here. They have entire libraries of backgrounds, which is rare. And that's one reason why I really love Mint is you can make it look great right out of the box without even downloading anything. Accessibility for any handicapped folks out there, get into here and do that. Applets, this is the stuff in the taskbar. So if you're in the taskbar and you want to add stuff like the trash can, by all means, go ahead and do that or remove stuff. So uh, you know what? I don't like this little printer icon. Let's go and find that and remove it. It's under printers. You just select it and then just hit the little minus sign and it removes it. And you can actually download new applets. So if there's like a, you know, a weather that you want on there, we can just go ahead and download the weather and it'll throw our weather on our actual taskbar if you wanna do that. I'm not a big fan of it, but for today's video, let's go ahead and just add it. Uh, I did go ahead and enable workspace switcher. That's that one, two, three, four down here. Um, and the whole reason I did that is because we're gonna get into workspaces a little bit towards the end. But uh, we have uh, just a couple things. So I, 
so as far as the applets I had on here, I do have trash, I have workspaces, I have my updates. Uh, this is just the network connection, uh, sound, and then battery usage. So uh, the battery tells me how much battery is in my mouse and keyboard respectively as I'm using wireless here. And uh, that's about it. It's date and time, I bet you can guess what that is. Uh, desk applets. Now this is kind of cool. This is these things in the background. So uh, you can add these, you can not, it's up to you. I really love Simple System Monitor. Actually, if you're using KDE and another spin of Linux, uh, it has sys Simple System Monitor, which I always enable uh, by default, but Mint is very much the same here. I go to download and it's actually one of the top downloads. It's down here, Simple System Monitor. That's what I use for my disk space and then also my CPU and memory usage. Absolutely fantastic. So by all means, definitely check out the desk look. Desk look. Desklets? Yeah, it's desktop widgets is what I'm going to call it. That's a horrible name. But anyways, uh, on the desktop itself, let's say you don't want your computer in home. Like, I think it just kind of looks ugly and ancient. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those, kind of have a cleaner desktop. Extensions. There's some stuff. I've tried some of the downloads. I didn't find anything I really liked, uh, like wobbly windows you could add so you can, you know, wobble your windows and other things. I, I'm just like, I'm not a big fan of, of flash and flare, but there's some stuff in here people do like. Uh, I just not didn't like any of the extensions that come with Mint. To each his own. Uh, general, there's not much in general, like uh, VSync and some other things. So if you have tearing, you might actually go ahead and switch this over to, to the different ones and say, hey, uh, wh whatever you want to do, I, I'm going to put none for VSync. And then hot corners, I hate hot corners, but basically if you put your mouse in the top left, it'll pull up like a workspace switcher or whatever you want. You can specify what each hot corner does. I have them all disabled as, again, I don't like them. Input method and languages. This is for any of you non-English people, or if you set it improperly during the install, you would change these around. I have both these set to, to English language and US for the keyboard input. Notifications, I disable all notifications because guess what? I want to tell them when I update. I don't need a pop-up saying, hey, there's updates available. When I want to update, I'll do it when I'm good and ready. This isn't Windows, we get to choose. And then online accounts, you could sync up Google accounts and those types of things. I don't like to actually sync up any accounts with my operating system, so I don't do anything here. I don't change much the default panels. Uh, as far as preferred applications, this is just what is the default for like your web browser, your mail, those types of things. Uh, so I would probably switch my video from cell celluloid to like VLC um, and then probably like PDF editor to a better PDF editor than what comes with it. Uh, but other than that, I think, uh, you know, it's really a nice way to set your defaults. Privacy, this is really simple in Linux because there's really not many privacy concerns. But if you don't want it remembering your access files, by all means, just come in here, disable it, and then you never have to worry about it even remembering what you opened. Screensaver, I bet you can guess what that is. Startup applications. This is what will launch when your computer is started. So if there is something you wanna add, you just hit the plus sign and then specify a custom command or application you wanna launch. And then it just adds it to here. And you can actually go ahead and disable some. Like I've disabled uh, Mint Welcome. And then I also disabled like the print queue and those types of things. Uh, but by all means, come in here, clean that up. If there's something you you don't want to use, you can disable it. Or if you still want to add something, you can. Windows and window tiling. Uh, I actually kind of turned you know most of the options off here. Uh, if you're familiar with snapping, like when you slam this to the top, it would snap. Uh, you can actually turn that on with this right here, so you can actually do that. Um, I don't particularly care for snapping, as you can just do hotkeys and things like that to to do it, but. If you do like the window snapping, by all means, that's where you turn it on. Workspaces, this is probably one of my favorite things of Linux. Linux was actually the originator of workspaces. And you might be thinking, what is workspaces? And workspaces is kind of cool. It's a way to isolate applications between this one and that one. So let's say I'm in the middle of something and I wanna switch out to a file browser, but I don't wanna mess with my current layout on this screen. I can hold Control, Alt, and then press the right key and do that. All right, all right I'm gonna launch into my Explorer look that up and go, oh, you know what? I need to check out a browser. So I can actually launch in this one and then launch my browser. Now you're probably thinking, how is he actually doing that? Is it that editing? I'm like, no, that's actually hotkeys, which we're gonna get into in just a moment. But 
just to kind of show you the power of workspaces, you can flip through here just using hotkeys. And that's how a lot of people in Linux become so efficient and, and proficient with uh, uh, their actual workflows because it's really darn slick. So uh, that's workspaces in a nutshell. Uh, Mint has a very basic version of workspaces. I like to just kind of get people's feet wet with Mint in their workspaces. And then maybe uh, as you get more advanced, you might move into like a tiling window manager which we're not gonna worry about today as that's more of an advanced video. I wanna drop that little seed in your mind just because it's really, really darn cool, but they have a really basic version on Mint, which is great for, for newbies. Um, as far as these first three, I'm not gonna really mess with. Disks, the built-in disk management, I don't like. I like to use a package called Gparted. It's a lot better than the partitioning built into disks. You know, it's like Mac OS, uh, and, and again, I don't like it. Displays, this is how you set up your displays. I have two displays, one which we're on right now, and then the second one, which again, that's behind me, we can actually drag that over so it's to the right. It actually pulls into that, that little screen over there. That's my secondary display. So you can actually set all those display settings up, which is great. So we'll, we'll go ahead and go back here from the displays, graphic tablet, gonna skip, keyboard, this is one thing that you have to get in. This is the power tool that I think is just so clutch. Under shortcuts, you can go to launchers and you can set up launch commands. So let's say I want my terminal to be super X. You can actually click this and it'll launch into terminal, which is pretty awesome. So you can actually uh, pick, pick an accelerator and launch terminal. Uh, I actually set a, a hotkey up already for that, uh, but you can actually do browser, which is super B, uh, home folder, which is super E, which, you know, if you're sitting here, you go super E, which is Windows. If, if you see super or meta key, this is basically the Windows key. That's just Linux lingo for Windows key, basically, on your keyboard. And it's just a good way to any of your applications you're in on a daily basis, I'd set a hotkey up. Just add the custom shortcut and then just type the command in right here and uh, it would go ahead and do it. If you click here, you can actually select the commands that you wanna run. But always do hotkeys for every launcher that you use on a daily basis. It's gonna make you a lot more efficient. And I absolutely love the keyboard short keys in pretty much every Linux install I've ever done. Uh, mouse, touchpad, network, all these are pretty basic settings I'm not gonna actually go into. Power management is something I like to go into and turn most of this stuff off, but you'd come into here and say, hey, uh, I always dis recommend disabling suspend. System suspend in Linux isn't great, so I don't recommend actually doing it. Now I do turn off my screen usually inactive, uh, but since this is kind of stuck in the rack back there, I don't really want it turning off. And uh, you know, it, it just depends what you want to do, but I always disable hybrid sleep and system suspend as these are not great utilities. And I always just say, hey, you either shut down your computer, or you leave it on and then just have the screen timeout is my recommended settings for pretty much every Linux distribution in existence. Uh, printers, sound, all those types of things. Um, you can you can actually adjust this. The sound functionality in Mint is probably one of the best out there as you really get to choose a lot of really cool things with it. Um, we'll get into that more in an advanced video where you won't have this sound functionality and we can actually tweak it a bit more. Firewall, login window, users and groups. This is more advanced. I'm gonna actually not touch on that. Software sources though, I do want to just kind of uh, show you this is where you'd change uh, the actual mirror so sometimes these mirrors change and you need to actually go back in and edit them to get the fastest so if you're you're really slow with updating it's a chance the mirror slowed down you can actually click on this and then it'll actually start running speed tests on everything and then you can go okay the mirror I'm on obviously slow down and then select whichever one's fastest from here and that's basically it for the system settings. I absolutely love this. It's very intuitive, very easy for a new user. And in the next video, let's get into programs and installing programs, not just going to the software center or anything like that. I'm talking about installing any program, even Windows programs. I'm gonna to touch in on this next video. Uh, so with that said, uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and uh, stay tuned for the next video as I'm gonna put it down below and uh, you should be able to easily access it unless it's the day of release and then you're going to have to wait a little bit until that video is produced. But with that said, I'll see you in the next one.